Hey, what's going on, family? It's the music course for part two um, of how to create a charity art initiative, right? Um, one of one of the big things where I get into it, actually, I want to say, um, if you haven't noticed or if you're new here, and I want to catch you up on it. Um, the fastest way probably going to be to make a name in the art world is probably not going to be just doing things for yourself and just with your own art. Um, particularly if we're talking about over larger areas, like not just in your town or just in your circle, you know, um, if we're trying to go statewide and region wide and, you know, um, national and then international. It's going to be because you've done things with others, um, other artists, other curators, other organizations. That's how it's gonna happen. So the whole idea of collaborating and, and connecting, you know, teaming up to grow. Um, I mean, you did a good start by getting the community, but it's going to take if you're trying to expedite the process, it's going to take more than just you. It's just what you're doing with your art. That's just... It's a lot of artists. Way more artists than there are opportunities or places to hang art. Because all artists just keep creating more art. So the places are finite and the art is not. Um, so in order to stand out, we got to do something different. got to create some strategies. Um, be clever be innovative, be creative, because we're creatives, and do something different. So um, that's why I'm real big on things like this. So hopefully you saw the first video. If not, go back and watch that. And this is video two. So I'm going to pick up, you know, right where, where I think I left off from the first video. And, um, you know, you can play this back and watch this at your convenience and everything. And I think I like these. I think I'm going to do more of these, uh, you know, for the Pay the Artist Club. So, and as usual, if you have any questions you need me to answer, shoot those over and I can get them covered. And I'm going to um, throw the link out as well too in a few weeks for everybody to schedule uh, another one-on-one -on -one because it's about that time. I check in with you and see what you got going on. So if you ain't been on your game, you got a couple weeks to pick it up because I'm holding you accountable. That's This is how we get better, right? Outside of Kobe Bryant, everybody needs somebody to push themselves. He's the only one that I know of that can push themselves harder than anybody else can push them. If somebody else is pushing you, you know, you're going to go further because they don't know you about to break or you think you're about to break, and so they just keep pushing. So I'm going to push you a little bit. That's what I'm here for, right? Um, so picking up where we left off, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm like a good 95% now, you know, I was a little ill, bouncing back. Um, <clears throat> let's get into, let's, I want to start from collaborating with others, right? I think that's around about where I left off. I might have touched a little bit into this on the first video, but this is where I want to start on this one. Um, when you're coming up with these ideas, or even if you already have the idea, but now you're going into executing on it, um, a good suggestion is to reach out to other artists. So don't have everything be all on your plate, trying to figure it all out. The more people to promote an event, more people to market an event, the higher potential for more people to attend the event. So if you're doing some type of collaboration, um, you get assistance with that. So it, worst case scenario, you get exposed to a whole nother set of, you know, potential fans or followers or buyers that you currently did not have. So you want to collaborate. So reach out to other artists that you might know would be into 
um, the project. So let's say, for example, you know an artist that, you know, you like the artist, you love the work, and let's say the artist has a personal struggle, even this is, you know, you kind of want to, you know, get creative. Want to play on some hard strings, a little bit of something. Maybe you see they had a personal bout with alopecia or something. They used to have all the snotty chop it off, whatever the case may be. Bam, now maybe you get with an organization that's supporting like awareness and cures and all that for alopecia. And then, you know, you get that kind of deal working and then you reach out to them. Hey, you know, I'm doing something and it's about this and, you know, the alopecia awareness and this and that. And, you know, a little bit about the story. Would you feel like, and this could be, you know, a quote unquote celebrity artist that might be like, oh, yes, based on this, I want to do it. So I want to work with you, which boosts you as well. So this, again, is a nice way in, like, how are you approaching people different than everybody else approach them? That's that's just it. Like, if you find a a pretty woman or a, a handsome man, they they probably have heard numerous times that they're attractive. So you just saying the same thing, and it's like, okay, I, I understand at this point. What what else was was going on? Um, or you always used to attract the people and again that's average it's like okay you look good but so do everybody else so what are you, what are you saying um what's different about you this is where you come in this is where you be different and this is where you make a lot of headway really fast get clever get strategic figure that out maybe you do it in that order okay this is a person i want to work with or organization i want to work with let me do something for them or that can touch them can benefit them might be part of their purpose or maybe they're passionate about this let me go in and do something along that line and then circle back and tie to tie them in later once i already have that um or you can do the purpose first and then start looking for people that might have some type of ties into it um might feel connected some type of way or anything so how you go about that is not doesn't have to be in any particular order, but um, you want to tie those in together and you want to work with other artists. So reach out to other artists. Don't do it by yourself. Just because I'm kind of telling you to set it up and do the legwork and all of that. I prefer you do that by yourself unless they already, somebody you want to work with already has those connections and everything. Other than that, you want to do it by yourself because you want to hold those keys you want to have those relationships because let's say these are humans we're talking about just because you get along with somebody today don't mean you're going to get along with them tomorrow people fall out things happen you still want to have those ends you still want to have those connections so you should have them in your phone or you know the email and your old decks whatever case may be you know you want to control it if you can and you should because it was your idea, because I'm talking to you about it now. Um, <clears throat> look for influencers as well. So they might not be artists that are going to help, but maybe the influencer is tied to this cause. You know, the influencer went through bouts of homeliness, so they're helping you, you know, do some, you know, get popularity or price of awareness on your event that you're selling art, you know, auctioning art for, you know, the men's rotating shelter or something like that or whatever. And like, you know, is the the options are limitless. So like it's so many, I'm stuttering on myself trying to pull one out. Like it's a lot. There's a lot of different ways you can go, a lot of options is I don't know how many charitable organizations just in your state period. You ain't even gotta go outside of your state. Um probably ain't got to go outside of the yeah, county realistically i'm sure it's probably a dozen in the county you, you're in so look into those contact them and they they need you they need your help they're looking for new ways looking for innovative ways innovative ways um contact them and you know watch each other's backs Uh, what else I got in my notes? Okay, so then the next step. 
Now I'm on six out of eight. I did four the first time, and I'm doing four this time, right? Next step, uh, the next thing I want to talk about at least is your fundraising strategies. So you have to determine how you're going to raise funds for the charity initiative. So, and it could be a combination of things. You don't have to be one stream, you know, so are we selling tickets? Um, are we having vendors? Are we charging vendors? Are we selling merchandise? Um, we selling food, alcohol, you know, of course we can be doing this auction or, you know, direct sales of the work. Um, we, are we doing raffles, you know, 50 fifties, whatever, like what is, what is it that we're doing, you know, to actual fundraise? So what are your fundraise strategies? You got to know this cause they're going to want to hear about this. Right. Um, and again, you can get very creative. You can do something like puzzles of the organization's logos or something like you can do a bunch of different things. Again, that's, that's endless. It, it'll take forever to kind of go over different options you could possibly do. Um, but have your fundraising strategies in line and ideally you want them to involve selling your artwork. That's what we're here for, right? Um, you know, seeking sponsorships is also in the fundraising and you're going to find sponsors a lot, a lot more eager to support if it's for a cause. So again, get that cause and, you know, use it, have it move. If, again, if it's something you're passionate about, it, it's just going to be way easier. So find that. But your sponsorships or your partnerships. And your partnerships could look like, and sponsorships can be in kind as well, too. I, I think a lot of people just think of um, monetary sponsorships, but that's not the only type of sponsorship. And I mean, especially if something was going to cost money, but now you don't have to pay for it, that's a sponsorship. You got that in kind, you got that for free. You know, let's say it's a space, and they sponsor the space. That's 700 to $1,500 you didn't have to pay for that space. So that's a sponsorship still even though it wasn't monetary. So often when I ask for partnerships or sponsorships, I give an uh, in-kind option as well. So it was like, all right, this is, you know, what I'm asked for monetarily, but if you can do this or if you can do both, I'm trying to think of the, the verbiage I, I use more often than not, but that's the gist of it, essentially. I want you to have options. I kind of don't want you just telling me no and just running with that. Like, you, you got to say no to this and no to that and no to that. Like, I'm asking more than one thing. Because um, I probably only got one shot. I probably only got your attention one time. You know, you're going to open that email and read thoroughly through that email once or answer my phone once and stuff like that. So, um, so know your fundraising strategies, right? So next is engaging your audience. So if you can, if you can get their um, contact list, if they're willing to share that with you, because you can say, you know, you have a marketing campaign, that'd be awesome. If not, you you know you can get the emails of the people that show up later to the event. But if you get that email list, woo, forget that. Um, but regardless, you guys can spend time together and come up with strategies on how you're going to market this. And regardless whether they give it you the contacts or not, they're going to market it. So they're marketing it to your name to everybody that they know or have contact to. So it's it's still a win regardless what happens it's still a win period um so keep that in mind and you can also use that maybe as part of the raffle you join your email list and you know you're sending out you know digital raffle tickets or maybe you announce later who's going to be the winner or something like that or 
you know, again, get creative. Um, but yeah, regularly communicate with them. If you can have some type of countdown or anything like that, um, you know, reminders, save the dates, just regularly communicate with them um, as often as possible. So that's on engaging your audience. Of course, I, you gotta identify who your audience is. First and foremost, uh, you establish organizations, you kind of want to have them do as much of the marketing as possible. Because you didn't tell them you was bringing all your people to them to do something. You just said you was helping them fundraise and you had these ideas and you know ways for them to do that. But it's not your responsibility to bring all your people as an artist over to, you know, your collectors over to buy something so you can give them some of that money. That's that's not your thing. I mean, if it was like that, you can just get donate. You can just get the money after you sell the painting on your own. Like we ain't have to do all this. It's not what this was about. And then the last thing is tracking and reporting. So, um, those who got to know, um, kind of always about. Excuse me. <sighs> not only what we doing now, which is always cool, but what we doing next? And how are we leveraging what we doing now to set up what we doing next? Or, I mean, I might do something else next, but then maybe what I'm doing now is setting up for something that I'm be doing, you know, two or three projects down the line. But basically, we wanna keep momentum going because just like a body in motion is stays in motion, a career in motion stays in motion. Like stopping it and starting and stopping and starting is very difficult and it's frustrating also. We want momentum, we wanna keep going um, and just keep things rolling. So it's like we coming right off of promoting it for something to happen, you know, showing it happening, showing the post promotion as we going into the promotion for the next thing that's happening. Like action creates action. If you want action, excuse me, create action and then more action to come. Whether the action come to you first and then you get active and then it keeps going or you create it and then you keep going like, Action creates action, so get active. Stay active is the bigger thing. You don't even just get active, stay active. So, um, track and report what's going on. So you know how often you're doing things, what's working, what's not working, so you can make your adjustments, just unlike any other area in life. Keep practicing. Uh, track of your progress and financial goals throughout the whole initiative. And you set the goals in step two. That was, you know, in the last video. So go back and watch that again if you didn't see it. So it, that really, um, you know, helps you measure your impact, helps you show and prove. You have this this proven model now that you can take to your next gig or your next organization. You can say, look, this is what I did for them. I can do that or more for you. And with those records and tracking, you know, you, it shows transparency. And I'm, I'm sure you get asked back again. But collaboration is key. And things like this, like organizations have multiple people. So while it's still cool to collaborate with one person, it's even cooler to collaborate with one organization that has multiple persons. Efficiency, it's one of my core values. So that's what you're gonna get from your coach. Efficiency, 
What's the least amount of moves we can make to make the most happen? I'm about conserving energy. Because I like to have fun. So I need my energy conserved so I can go do that. Right? Any questions, comments, concerns, leave it down below. Steve Muse, pay the artists. Peace.